introduced less than a decade ago. Lockheed Martin's Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, or THAAD, system is now a critical element of the United States Ballistic Missile Defense System. With its ability to intercept and destroy ballistic missiles both inside and outside the Earth's atmosphere as they descend towards their target, the program is one of the company's greatest defense successes. During its first decade of service, THAAD had an incredible 100% success rate, with 15 successful intercepts in 15 attempts. And while a relatively new weapon system, many countries' armies have expressed particular interest in deploying it. However, several nations are highly alarmed by the technology, and it almost cost South Korea its cordial relationship with the mighty Red Dragon. A Kinetic Punch The Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, known as THAAD, is an American-made anti-ballistic missile defense system, one of the latest United States innovations in defense technology. Targeting short, medium, and intermediate range ballistic missiles, THAAD's overall operation is similar to other surface to air and missile interceptor systems. However, a clear differentiator is that the Lockheed Martin design intercepts the devices while they're in their descent stage. After an X band active electronically scanned array radar kicks off THAAD's interception and detects the target projectile, the system's fire control and support equipment identifies verifies, and initiates the launching process. The system's mobile erector launcher then releases the Infrared Seeker head-equipped THAAD missile, which intercepts with a hit-to-kill approach. According to the system's manufacturer, Lockheed Martin, instead of an actual warhead, THAAD relies purely on the kinetic energy of the impact to destroy the incoming enemy missile in downwards direction, with its destructive power coming from the high velocity and not an ammunition load. As such, the THAAD system is designed to provide a robust defensive shield to protect high-value strategic or tactical sites, such as airfields or populated town centers, against a mass raid. While the actual data for Lockheed's system is classified, according to estimates, THAAD systems have an estimated range of 125 miles and can intercept enemy missiles at both endo- and exo-atmospheric altitudes, with a maximum altitude of 93 miles above the Earth's surface and it does this while traveling at incredible hypersonic speeds of Mach 8. According to 2015 estimates, a THAAD battery system consists of at least six launcher vehicles, each with eight missiles, two mobile tactical operations centers, and a ground-based radar, costing $800 million per battery. Program Success Developed after the experience of Iraq's successful Russian-made Scud missile attacks during the 1991 Gulf Wars, the United States Army began the program development and risk reduction phase of the THAAD systems the following year. Then, after thorough research, the THAAD program entered the engineering and manufacturing development phase at the turn of the century. From its beginning, the development of the anti-ballistic missile defense system became a resounding success for both Lockheed Martin and the United States Army. Separate flight test trials began in 2004 at Lockheed Martin's production facilities in Alabama and White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. The first flight test of the entire system, with missile, launcher, radar, and fire control system, took place in 2006, and a successful intercept test in the high endo-atmosphere occurred the following year. Despite initial plans to deploy the system around 2010, the successful tests caused an involuntary expedition. In early 2007, Lockheed Martin was awarded a contract with the first two production THAAD systems, which were completed two years later. Then, in May of 2008, the United States Army activated the first THAAD battery unit, followed by the second in October of 2009. Follow-on contracts for the continued development of the system and associated support equipment continued through the 2010s, and by the end of 2015, Five terminal high-altitude area defense batteries were active in the United States Army. In addition, the service opened a THAAD training center at Fort Sill, Oklahoma that same year to facilitate the use of the thriving program. International Buyers In 2012, the United States Defense Security Corporation Agency approved the sale of the terminal high-altitude area defense to both Qatar and the United Arab Emirates, marking the first foreign military sale of the weapon.
The United Arab Emirates began training units that same year, and the nation became the first to use the systems in a military operation in early 2022. During a dangerous attack by Houthi militants, an Islamic insurgent group in Abu Dhabi, the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System intercepted and took out a mid-range ballistic missile used to attack an Emirati oil facility near an airbase. The attack used cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and drones. The Emirati Embassy in Washington, D.C. did not respond to a request for comment, and the events were only confirmed through anonymous external sources. The system has been continually deployed around the world since then, including in Guam, Israel, Japan, and South Korea, with multi-billion dollar deals. A home run for Lockheed Martin. The company achieved the milestone of delivering 100 interceptors to the United States and its allied nations in July of 2015. Still, not all nations are happy with the existence and use of this powerful weapon. The China Issue Discussions between the United States and South Korea to acquire THAAD systems began in early 2016 due to North Korea's growing nuclear missile threat. Soon after, China's ambassador to Seoul implied that the deployment of the defense system could potentially destroy relations between South Korea and China. Instead of the powerful kinetic punch, China's main worry regarding THAAD is the system's surveillance capabilities. According to the spokesperson, the use of THAAD would give Washington earlier warning and tracking of Chinese intercontinental ballistic missiles, thus downgrading the nation's ability to target the United States. Even Russia was threatened by the ballistic missile defense radar and denounced its use in nearby European nations like Poland. Once the negotiations between the United States and South Korea were in full swing, China wasted no time implementing informal sanctions against various industries. Such economic pressure against South Korea was meant to reverse its decision. Because the THAAD system was deployed on a piece of land transferred from Korean grocery store chain Lottie to the South Korean government, the company inadvertently became the epicenter of the geopolitical dispute. Consequently, Beijing implemented an informal ban on group tourism travel and went as far as staging a public bulldozing of Korean spirit bottles. Even Korean cultural exports, like K-pop music and K-dramas, once a mainstay in Chinese popular entertainment, were largely erased from content platforms, and several artists faced visa restrictions. The Three No's To relieve the economic strain on the targeted South Korean industries, as well as to normalize the relationship between the nations, a new administration began to negotiate a solution to the impasse in the fall of 2017. The agreement between China and South Korea called for the resumption of normal economic relations through the commitment to the Three No's Plan. This deal prohibited any additional deployment of THAAD batteries, no South Korean integration into the United States-led regional missile defense system, and no trilateral alliance with the United States or Japan. From then on, the Chinese and South Korean relationship has significantly improved. Nevertheless, while the renewal of regular connections has seen an uptick in Chinese tourists in South Korea, the sanctions put in place can still be felt to this day. It is estimated that the South Korean tourism industry may have lost up to $24 billion because of the implementation of the THAAD system. According to cultural experts, the dispute over the Lockheed Martin weapon may also have helped spur some of the growth seen in South Korean culture in other countries, including America, as it forced the industry to look to other markets.